In this segment, what I want to look at is I want to look at complex formations. Okay? So complexes are very difficult for students because a lot of times you just accept that something has happened and you don't really think about what's going on. So here's a great example of that. Here I have a copper chloride solution. Okay? So if I bring this a little close, and hopefully this will zoom in at some point and you can get a nice accurate vision of this, you'll see some green here at the bottom, blue up here, and then you'll even see a little bit of green here. So the copper chloride itself is green when in certain instances, but you can also see that it's clearly blue here. So it's an interesting question. What's the difference between down here where I see the green and up here where I see the blue? And the answer is it depends on what's surrounding the copper ion. And a lot of these things in complexation are very complex, fun intended. So normally when I have something in solution, what I would think of is surrounding this would be a bunch of water molecules. So if I have a water here and a water here and a water here, that's what I would consider to be dissolved meaning. But it turns out that you can have other things besides water molecules. If you look at the interaction here, if we were to break this down, really what you're seeing is that the negative charged end of the water molecule is attracting to the copper ion's positive charge. So this polar side, positively charged side of this water is, is being drawn to this. There's an attraction between the two. So really anything that has that negative pole could do the same. So if we start to think about it, copper chloride, a chloride ion, has a lot of negative charge. In fact, it is negatively charged. It has a net negative charge. So that electron density on that can also be attracted to the copper ion. So in this, where you're seeing green, you're actually seeing copper ions that are surrounded by chlorides. Okay, so that's happening down here where I have a large concentration of chloride. As I let this mix and stir, they're often going to get replaced by water because there's a lot more water molecules in here than there are chloride. So as that happens, you're going to see this green start to fade, and it's going to turn into just the blue. Okay. Now, that interaction there is a little different. It's a little bit in between bonding and intermolecular forces. Okay. It's a strong interaction, okay, and it occurs in solutions. So this is called the ligand when it would attach to this, and, and when you're doing complex problems, it's difficult to identify when it occurs. Okay, first of all, you're going to have a charged metal ion of some kind. And you might have that in the form of precipitate, but somewhere you're going to see something. A silver ion, a copper ion, a zinc ion, an aluminum ion. Okay, and some things don't really do this very much. So magnesium doesn't really form complex ions. But if you had a zinc ion, and you added something to it that traditionally you wouldn't think of as being a reaction, like an ammonia, one of the things that can happen is that the negative polar end of that ammonia molecule can attract to this and form that ligand complex interaction. Okay. Now some clues that you're seeing that starts with the word excess. Anytime you see the word excess, that's a hint that that's a possibility. It doesn't mean that definitely you're going to see that, but it means that if I say excess ammonia, it's likely that what's going to happen is you're going to form a complex interaction because you're flooding that solution with ammonias that can now attract to this. Okay. The other clue that you're looking for is you're looking for the metal ion. And then the last clue is you're looking for something that's a ligand like this. Okay, so things that would have negative charge would be things like ammonia and water and any chloride. Um, hydroxides can do it. Anything with a negative charge work, a bromide, an iodide, or just like we said before, something that's polar and has that negatively charged end to the molecule. Okay, so one of the examples of this, I'm going to take my copper solution which currently has a little bit of that green color left at the bottom, but it's getting pretty faint. So this is the copper MV surrounded by chloride, and up here is copper surrounded by water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that with ammonia. So when I add the ammonia to this, the ammonia is going to displace those water molecules, and it's going to surround the copper. And you can tell because you see a really rich blue color. So that right there is a complex, and what it is, is it's ammonia molecules surrounding those copper ions. Now down here, you're seeing the basicity of the ammonia form a copper hydroxide salt, a precipitate. And then down here, you see the copper surrounded by the water, and then lastly, you see the copper surrounded by the chlorides. Okay, so it's a very nice, colorful display. Here is how you would write all of those molecules, or complexes. So the green you would have copper, which is 2 plus charge. Now, really you can have a number of different amounts of ligands surrounding it. 
By the AP test, they will always accept double the charge. So I could put the copper ion, four chloride ligands around it. The copper has a two plus charge, and I have four negative charges, which gives me a total charge of negative two. Okay. If I then go to the next section, which was copper surrounded by water, I would put copper, a water molecule, I would have four of them. The water doesn't have any net charge to it, even though it has the polar ends, it would be a two plus charge overall. Okay. Then, there's the precipitate, so it's not a complex, it's just copper hydroxide. And then at the top, I form that copper ammonia. So it would be copper, ammonia, I would have four of them, and again, not charged, so it would have a two plus. Okay. So, in an AP reaction question, what you're looking for is, is you're looking for the words excess. You can also look for, you know, ligands. Like if you have ammonia that's not an acid-base reaction, that's generally a clue. Um, and then the last thing that can happen is just, honestly, some of these questions don't seem to make any sense. Um, one of the common ones is silver chloride is dissolved in hydrochloric acid. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Silver chloride is insoluble. So it's very suspicious for a question. That's where you would start to get to it. Maybe I'm looking at a complex. Silver chloride plus hydrochloric acid okay, would look like this. In solution, silver chloride is a precipitate. And then this would be hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. Okay. What this is happening is this chloride is going to also attract to that silver ion, forming a complex that will be soluble. So when it says something that's insoluble dissolves, and that's typically going to be with a complex. The hydrogen ion would be a spectator. So I could leave it out of my equation. Essentially what's happening is a chloride is coming in and forming a complex with the silver chloride to make this silver chloride complex. Okay. Aluminum hydroxide has excess hydroxide added to it is another common one. The word excess is in there. That's a tip. Okay. The other thing is you have something that's insoluble somehow dissolving. That would be a clue that you're looking at a complexation reaction. Okay. It's a really nice color. So now we're seeing mostly the ammonia and the copper. Okay, so if I could see inside of there, which I can't because the light wouldn't be able to be able to interact with the atomic level, it's too small. Um, but what I would see is I would see copper ions and I would see four ammonias surrounding them in the midst of all of this water, all this solution. Down here, okay, there's copper hydroxide salt crystals. Okay, and those are temporarily suspended in the solution. Over time, they're going to settle out to the bottom. Okay. So, so that picture is very difficult to kind of articulate, which makes it then very difficult to go through and say, okay, what is this that I'm representing? But what I am saying is I'm saying I have a copper ion surrounded by four ammonias. The whole thing carries a two plus charge, and that whole thing is dissolved in this water that's in here.